Welcome to episode 99 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we continue the saga of Friteof, where Friteof discovers what his inheritance will be in chapter 4, called Friteof's Inheritance. The two aged heroes died as they had hoped within a short time of each other, and were buried as King Bella had bidden, the two princes being declared joint heirs to the throne by decree of the people, while Fritaeoff took possession of his heritage from Nuss. His lands were on the coast and extended for three miles in each direction. Forests of birch crowned the mountain tops, whose slopes were covered with golden barley and waving rye growing by the height of a man. Lakes teeming with fish mirrored the wooded heights. Through the forest, threaded with rushing streams, roamed noble stags, proud and stately as kings. On the rich meadows, herds of cattle with sleek, glossy hides cropped the green sward while here and there rode flocks of sheep, like fleecy cloudlets, slowly drifted across the blue vault of heaven. Ranged in two rows, twelve pairs of fiery coursers pawed impatiently in their stalls, shining steel were their hoofs, their manes knotted with red. The great drinking hall was so spacious that six hundred guests would scarcely fill it. Round the wall extended a table of polished oak, and on either side of the high seat images of the gods were skillfully carved from elm wood, one representing the All-Father Odin, the other Frey, who rules over the rain and sunshine. Over the high seat where Thorstein had sat for so many years, a glossy black bearskin with scarlet jaws and the claws tipped was silver. Midway of the hall was the great hearth of smoothly polished stone, whence the dancing flames shot ceaselessly upward and suspended around the walls. Helm and shield and swords glittered in the reflection of the blaze. Rich indeed was the dwelling. Abundance everywhere met the eye. Crowded presses, well-filled cellars and storerooms, while many a jewel, spoil of many a conquest, lay hidden in a closed locked chest. But the three most precious possessions of the house were famed throughout the land. Of these, the first was a sword called Angervadil, or Brother of Lightning, forged by dwarfs in some far eastern land. Friteof's ancestor had brought with it many heroic deeds. The hilt was of a hammered gold, and the blade was covered with strange runes, the meaning of which was unknown save to those who forged it in the distant Orient. When Friteof drew it from the sheath, it flashed like the lightning or the streaming northern lights. Moreover, a magic power belonged to this wondrous heirloom. So long as peace ruled the land, the runes on the blade gleamed dull and pale. But when war prevailed, they burned red as the comb of a fighting cock. Next to this sword is renowned was an arm ring of pure gold, the work of halting Vonland, the Vulcan of the North Graved. On it were the names of the holy gods and their castles, with the signs of the changing seasons, while crowning the circlet as the sun crowns the heavens was a splendid ruby. This ring had long been an heirloom of the house, and had once been stolen by the robber Sote, who roved the seas pillaging and destroying. News came at last to Thorstein that Sote had caused himself to be buried with all his treasures in a walled-up mound on the shores of Britain. Yet there his spirit found no rest, but haunted the place as a specter. Forthwith, Thornstein resolved to seek his ghostly visitant, and with Bella, who offered to accompany him, took ship 
and sailed away to the shore of Britain, where they found Sote's place of burial. Like a sunken palace was the grave mound, over which lay piled up vast heaps of earth and ruined stonework. Thorstein and Bella peered through a chink of the doorway into the vaulted depths. There stood the black Viking ship, and high up on the mass squatted a grisly shape wrapped in a blue flaming mantle, its staring eyes rolling while it vainly endeavored to scour the blood stains from a rusty sword. All about lay heaps of gold, and on the arm of the phantom gleamed Thorstein's precious heirloom, the stolen arm ring. Bella whispered to Thorstein, let us go down together and fight with this fiery specter. But half angrily, Thorsten answered, Nay, one against one was the custom of our fathers. Alone I will strive with it. Long they contended as to which should first encounter the ghastly foe. But the lot fell to Thorstein. One blow of his spear burst in the door, and he descended into the vault while shield before him and sword in hand, King Bella listened without. Wild chantings he heard at first, like some magic spell, then loud clashing sounds as of swords crossed in conflict. Then came a horrible scream, followed by instant silence. And out staggered Thorstein, pale and distraught but on his arm he bore the ring. Never in after days would be related what had passed in those awful depths, and when questioned would turn away shuddering. But he was often wont to say, Truly, t'was dearly bought this arm ring, but once in my life have I trembled, and that was when I took it. Last of the three family treasures was the good ship Alida, Fritoff's ancestor. Viking, so it was said, returning once from a foray, discovered on his own shores a shipwrecked man. Tall he looked and nobly formed, with an open countenance, whose expression was constantly changing, like the glancing of waves in the sunlight. Sea green floated his hair, white as a wave foam his beard. A blue mantle enveloped his form, and the gold belt he wore was set with corals. Steering directly to the spot, Viking rescued the unfortunate and took him to his home and feasted him right nobly. But when at night the stranger was offered a bed, he shook his head, smiling, Fair is the wind, and my ship is a good one, he said, and many a mile I hope to leave behind me ere the break of day. Not but thanks have I to offer thee in return for thy hospitality, for my wealth lies deep beneath the ocean wave. Yet in the morning it may be thou wilt find some gift from me upon the shore. At daybreak, Viking hastened to the shore again, lo! With the swiftness of the sea eagle darting upon its prey, there came flying into the heaven one of the warships commonly known as dragons. Not a soul was to be seen on board, neither steersmen nor roars, yet uneerily the rudder guided its winding course amidst rocks and shoals, as it neared the land, the sails furled themselves, the anchor fell, and the slender vessel rested quietly upon the sandy beach. As Viking stood, gazing in astonishment at all, voices sounded from the dancing waves. They chanted, The man thou didst rescue and shelter was Agir, the lord of the seas. He forgets not his debts. See yon dragon? He sendeth this token to thee. Royal indeed was the gift of the sea god. The solid beams of the ship were not joined in the usual way, but grown together. 
long and dragon shape it lay upon the water the head reared high wide jaws gleaming red and gold the body speckled with blue and gold ending at the rudder in a coiling tail covered with silver scales black were the sails with edgings of gold and when each was fully stretched the ship flew like a storm wind swifter than the sea eagle with all these treasures and more besides for Heoth, next to the two kings was the richest man in all the land kingly of nature was he if not by birth and gentle and noble in word and deed twelve mighty champions hath he ever beside him tried comrades of his dead father among these gray beards like a rose set in the wreath of withered leaves was a youth called bjorn joyous as a child yet with the strength of manhood and the wisdom of age for teoth had grown up with him and together they had sworn blood brotherhood sorrowfully among these heroes sat for teoth in the high seat draining the mead horn at his father's grave feast after the custom of his ancestors while with a heavy heart he listened to the thundering hero songs sounded in praise of the departed and here is where i end my tale for today but i'll be back with more tales many more tales until then my friends enjoy the journey